Hey, Sea Life, uh, we have finished summer, Lisa Lett. Yes. Oh my goodness. Hallelujah. It has been a crazy summer at Sea Life uh, mm -hmm. and with all sorts of events, mission trips, camps, uh, retreats, mm -hmm. Bible studies. Yes. I mean, just so many different things. And um, it's been really good. It's been really exhausting. It's been really challenging, but it's also been really edifying. So uh, our hope is that as your groups are starting to come back together, uh, if you took the summer off, um, that you had not only a phenomenal summer, but that as you kind of walked through the Roman series uh, with us on Sundays, that you were able to still have conversations maybe with people uh, in your CG, maybe it's people at work or, or whatever else. We hope that that was uh, challenging to you and that it was beneficial for you. Uh, but the way we wanted to start off this school year was to just deal with one of those uh, topics, one of those practices um, that Christians talk a lot about. Right. Uh, I'm not sure we always practice it as mm -hmm. much as we talk about it, uh, but it's, it's this thing called prayer. And we titled the series, What Difference Does It Make? Now, you be honest, okay? Because some of you, like everybody's asked that question, I think at some point. Right. It's like, I get it. I'm supposed to pray. I'm supposed to talk to God, but it, a lot of times it feels like a very one-way conversation. And if you don't get what you ask for, mm -hmm. then the question, I think that's kind of natural out of that is, well, what difference does it make right. if I pray? Anyway, the other part of that is if God's sovereign and everything's already all mapped out, then what effect am I having? Am I having an effect right. uh, on the movement of God mm -hmm. in the world or in my world? Uh, or in my circumstances. And so what we want to do is we just want to spend a few weeks uh, right here at the beginning of a season where a lot of people are praying for their kids, praying for their spouses, praying mm -hmm. for uh, finances because all those summer bills are coming in. You know, yeah. Disney was fun, but <laughs> Disney gets paid. All right. So um, you start seeing all that. And so a lot of people are probably kind of focused on praying, but are we focused on the purpose of prayer? Right. And do we really have a good understanding of it? So now that's what week one really was intended to be in this series was just kind of setting the table to talk about uh, kind of God's involvement in prayer mm -hmm. uh, and why it is a good thing for us as Christians uh, to participate in prayer. So uh, with that kind of as, I guess, the intro into what we would discuss, um, just kind of just off the top, I know we haven't pre-rehearsed any of this, um, but how has prayer benefited you? in your life, in your walk, I mean, what, what, I'm not talking about maybe, maybe it's a specific instance, right. but just in, as a believer, why would you encourage someone to pray? Not because it's their duty, but because it's what? How would you maybe kind of move someone in that direction? I think the thing about prayer for me is that it, it always slows me down mm -hmm. to connect with God again. Um, I think we get so good at just doing things on our own or we feel like we can do things on our own. And so we just, we neglect that part of our spiritual journey, you know, and sometimes it's until we get exhausted. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, so, so it is so beneficial because it, it slows me down. Um, but also it takes me back to what really matters. When I take that time out to talk with the Lord, he reveals so much in me, uh, a lot, a lot confession a lot of the time that I'm praying it's like you know if my husband and I have conflict or something um, it's like God would you show him you know something yeah. I mean and and God's always like wait a minute let's think for a second how you handled it and it, it just you know it just shows me really where I need to be and some truths about myself that I really do need to know how, how would you say God generally reveals those things to you. So let's say, just playing off your example, so mm -hmm. there's some sort of conflict in your life, some sort of tension, whether it's with a spouse or a kid or a coworker. Right. I mean, you know. Not uh, you. Yeah, not <laughs> me, clearly. But like, so if there was there was tension and, and you were praying through that and you're like, oh man, I just, I, I realize maybe I need to do some self-evaluation. Right. How, how do you feel like God speaks to you through those moments? Well, I think a big part of it is just scripture, um, just knowing what his word says. And I don't have the Bible memorized and I would never, you know, stand up to recite the most verses on a Sunday or anything. But there's just through reading scripture and God revealing stuff to me through scripture. Um, what I feel like he does is 
is like, okay, this is truth. This is my word. This is truth. And so is what you're saying matching up with this? And I think what, what happens is the spirit within me is not going alongside, yep. it, it's not matching up well with, with what scripture says. And so, um, you know, if I realize in a moment, like if let's just, I don't know, my husband isn't a big talker. So let's just say an argument, he just shuts down and I let all my words go. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, there's verses about giving full vent, a fool gives full vent to his anger. Um, and you know, I just think like, oh, and then the verse that says it's better to live on the corner of a roof than in a house with a quarrelsome wife. I'm like, oh yeah, those things aren't good. And so I know a big part of how I receive correction through prayer is just with what scripture sure. says. Yeah. So God draws that stuff to the, the right. forefront of your mind. You weren't right. just reading that text, right? Yeah, absolutely. but along the way, you had read that text or whatever else. And hmm. I think that's one of the reasons the Bible's living and active, right. but it's also that the spirit of God is at work in that. Mm -hmm. And because you, I, I think what I'm hearing you say is because you hit the pause button and said, I'm, I am going to prioritize just some downtime to, mm -hmm. to be thoughtful, to be focused, to be open. Maybe is the better word. I'm mm -hmm. just open. God, I need to be, right. I want to be open to receive. And I've got my requests. I've, I've got what I think I would like to see happen, mm -hmm. but that then God begins to reveal things and draw things to the surface. Yeah, and I right. thought about it in a long time. And right. I, I, I like that because I think pretty much most of us that have been walking with the Lord for any amount of time, we've been confronted with opportunities to have conversations with people and we weren't real sure what we were going to say. And so we would just asked the Lord, God, well, I'm going to need you to help me with this mm -hmm. because I don't know what I'm going to say. And I know right. they're going to want answers or they're going to want me to help them. And I don't know what I'm going to say. And then on the other side of the conversation, you're like, I was just saying, like I said, I hadn't even thought about it right. before. Yeah. Like I, mm -hmm. and I was, and so God is using what, what you prayed for. Um, he's answering that prayer in, in a way that wasn't an audible voice, right. but is very clearly the Holy Spirit of God at work on your behalf, responding to uh, your openness and willingness to receive that counsel from right. the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and his word. So yeah, that's really good. So in our, our sermon um, from this past week, what we talked about is that uh, God hears our prayers, that God cares. Um, mm -hmm. And these are reasons why we should pray that, that right. he hears our prayers, he cares. Um, and, and he, he acts on these prayers. Like he, he's, he's moved by them mm -hmm. and, and he acts on our behalf. Um, and, and I think that that's probably the, the God hears our prayers. That's the one that I hear people kind of push back from the most. I think that intellectually or like maybe in our heart, we want to believe that God hears all of our prayers, right. but intellectually we're like, how does it, how would that even work? Right. Yeah. That he would hear all of our prayers and really even take into consideration and are my prayers like I got this friend that's praying you know for her life because she's battling this disease and, and I'm praying for this thing that's not really nearly as big or whatever for mm -hmm. the person who wonders does God actually even hear my prayers um, what kind of counsel do you give them what kind of encourage how do you encourage them to stay the course not again out of obligation but how do you begin to pastor them toward believing that God in fact does hear prayers, even when we don't get the answers we want, that he hears prayers. Well, again, scripture is very clear of, in, it has instance after instance of people coming to him, pleading um, before him, just asking for him to come through and he did. And so, um, you know, if he didn't get to watch the sermon and, and you're able to go back and watch it, you know, there were many examples of that. And so, um, Sometimes we try to make sense of things intellectually. I know mm -hmm. David was talking about that uh, the other day. And so if we can't make sense of how it all works, like how does God even hear them all? Who am I? Look at my prayer compared to her prayer. Um, and so intellectually it doesn't make sense. And so what I would say is what part of our faith really does make sense intellectually? And if we did understand it, how great would our God really be, you know? And so I would say, look, we don't always know how everything works. There's a lot, most stuff about our faith that we don't really know how it works. But what we do have to trust is his faithfulness yeah. um, and that what scripture says is true. Um, you know, it's never failed. It's, it's stood true and valid yeah. forever. And so 
uh, that would be my encouragement, you know, is just remembering what he's done yeah. in the past in scripture, but also in our own lives and just trusting he's going to continue to be faithful. Sure. You know? Yeah. And, you know, one thing is I've heard people say, and I felt it before, is I'll be encouraging them to pray about something like, I do pray, but I just don't feel like my prayers are getting further than the ceiling. Mm -hmm. and, and my kitschy little comment and come back to that is, well, God's everywhere. So it doesn't have to get past the ceiling. Right. You know, yeah. I mean, That's but, good. but I like at that. the same time, I know what they're saying. Right. You know, because it does feel like sometimes there's this barrier. Um, and I, you know, I, I know we've all, all of us that are teachers at some point have made the comment about the great theologian Garth Brooks, who mm -hmm. sometimes I thank God for unanswered prayers. Um, so I just made it again. But I do think that there's something sort of theologically sound about right. that, that, yeah. that just because it's what we desire in the moment doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily mean that it's what's best for us in the moment. And I don't want to go too far down that road because that's week three. You need to come mm -hmm. back and be sure that yes. you stay with us because week three we're going to talk about you know, kind of when God stops on red and the, the whole thing just is like, you know, hey, I, we're not moving forward in this right. particular, uh, this particular thing. Um, but there's something about persistence, I mm -hmm. think also, that it's not always, prayer isn't always uh, what God does for you. A lot of times prayer is what God is going to do in you through the process of praying. And so there have been times in my life where I realized that what I initially started praying for, but continued to be persistent, that over a period of time, as God was revealing different things to me, right. eventually the desire of my heart changed. And then what I wound up getting was the desire of my heart. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh wait, yeah. that's what the Bible says, that God will give us the desires of our hearts, but he's got to get our hearts in the right place right. first. Yeah. And so um, even though we shouldn't pray out of obligation or out of duty, um, I think that as children of God, we will starve ourselves spiritually right. if we never engage God through the practice of prayer. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the fact that, um, it's, it's a little overwhelming to even think about it, but the fact that somebody like me, uh, and this isn't meant to be a slam on you, but that somebody like you, or that somebody like any of you that are in your groups or whatever else, that whenever you pause and you um, begin to interact with God through prayer. The God of the universe, like, is listening. Yeah. He's listening. Mm -hmm. And I've, I have done nothing to merit the attention of sovereign, holy creator God. Um, and, and you haven't, and no one that's watching this has done that. But when we, like, if we start thinking about it like that, that God has given us such a beautiful gift mm -hmm. and the ability, like, he wants us to, to pray to him. I was, I was going to share just a couple of scriptures, um, but one that we used on Sunday was Jeremiah 33, where it says this, thus says the Lord who made the earth, the Lord who formed it to establish it, right? So this is, this is God we're talking about here. Uh, the Lord is his name. And then this is what he says, call to me and I'm going to answer you. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it is. Isn't yeah. It? I mean, it's so humbling and I will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. Hmm. And so what he's saying is this, that like I, I have... I've created it all and I've got it all going it, it, and, and I, like everything's in motion and the systems are working. The fact that your body's pumping blood right now, whatever else, I mean, the system is working mm -hmm. and I have given you an opportunity to just utter my name, Abba Father, like Abba, which is really daddy. Mm -hmm. and, and that's not intended to be disrespectful, right. but since he told us to pray to him that way, it, I think it's okay that we can approach him as our daddy mm -hmm. and that when we say that we have his full attention mm -hmm. and that he listens that he cares that he responds that he acts that he does all these things and I and you know and I'm a little overwhelmed by that because I'm just thinking like just yesterday I was doing something on my phone and I could hear my daughter daddy daddy <laughs> daddy 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 <laughs> and it was like five or six daddies yeah before I stopped and listened to her and all it takes according to the scripture for us is one daddy mm -hmm. and we have the full attention of sovereign God. It's pretty overwhelming. That's so crazy. And so, yeah. So last thought, maybe, do you have anything that you would want to share with a group that just says, you know, well, if I tell you what to say, then it's not your last <laughs> thought. Do you have a last thought? <laughs> tell me I came, what my last thought. came really close to micromanaging your thought. <laughs> so it's all good. Y'all just, you know, pulling the curtain back and see how I operate. Any last uh, thoughts? Well, one thing that that just made me think of is 
I went through a phase where I just was like, you know what? I, I don't really know that I need to pray because I trust God. I feel like I, I felt like it was a, like I had strong faith mm -hmm. to not pray. You know, I felt like if I'm asking him to change things when he knows what's best, then what does that mean of me? Um, and so some of you might be in that same situation where you don't, you either, um, you think so highly of God and so little of yourself that you find yourself in that tension, or you may just not know why. Um, I would just encourage you to maybe just Google what the Bible says about prayer even, um, just to see, not in my own life or what I'm feeling, but just what does the Bible say about prayer um, and stick with us throughout this whole series because I just believe God has more for us as, as a church, not just sea life, but as a, as a whole church uh, through prayer. Mm -hmm. and I, I really feel like we're missing out on something super special. Um, and I'm not talking about like he healing services on uh, the stage. I'm not talking about that specifically. I'm just talking about sure. within ourselves, movement within the body of Christ. Um, and so I would just say, just stick with us and just try it. You know, some people say, I, I don't think it's right to read my Bible unless I feel like it. Um, I don't feel like I'm doing it with a good intention, with a good heart. And, um, and I would say like for our kids, we don't wait for them to start until they respect us to start demanding respect mm -hmm. um, because we know that that's good for them. And so I would say what's good for us is to practice the things that are in scripture. And yeah. so, um, so try it. Yeah, let's, for sure. Let's do it. Last thing I'll say is the people that I have run across over the course of my life in ministry that are the most convinced about prayer um, and the ones that I would deem prayer warriors. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you have to journal to be spiritual, but they're the ones who have written down what they've been praying for and then they update with what God mm -hmm. has done, mm -hmm. how he how he moved and whatever. And and they don't always have a, I prayed for this and I got that. Right. You know, but, but they, they've, they've really kind of watched the movement of God take place in the way their heart changed and whatever else. So as you're wrapping up, um, here's, here's what I would encourage you to do. I would encourage you as a group to share um, some stories, some testimony of how God has responded to your prayers. And here's what you're gonna have to watch yourselves. Do not, okay, and, and I'm not gonna point, like, but I'm gonna do, like, do not. Uh, don't focus on all the things that you are currently praying for that God has not yet answered. Okay, we're going to get to when God doesn't answer later. This week, what we want you to do is we want you to celebrate and think back on and, and, and draw up those fond memories of whenever I was desperate in this mm. and prayed this, this is the way God answered it. And, and man, it was spot on. It, God gave me the desire of my heart right then because my heart was in the right place and share the stories of when God changed your heart and moved you to a new place in your spirit and then answered your prayer. But allow your conversation um, to point out those times and to celebrate those times and to testify to those times when God did answer your prayers, okay? Because again, we're gonna get to the other later, but for this particular discussion, yeah, I think it's good. gonna be really beneficial to focus on the fact that God listens, God hears, God responds, God does act on our behalf, He cares. He really does care. Um, because those stories are going to act as an encouragement to somebody in your group mm -hmm. who's in one of those moments where they're going, I just, like, I don't know. I don't get it. I don't understand why it's important because every time I try it, it's never really paid off. And they need to hear from somebody who says, listen, it's not a transaction like that. It's, right. it's, it's a process of God developing you in your faith. So uh, appreciate the conversation. Hope that it's been beneficial to you all. Uh, and we will look forward to seeing you back to week two of our prayer series. What difference yeah. does it make?